We get another way of proving conditional statements by remembering that every conditional statement has a contrapositive form. Recall that a conditional statement if p then q is equivalent to the conditional statement if not q then not p. We call this the contrapositive form of the statement. This means that if we have a conditional statement if p then q that we're trying to prove, we could instead prove the equivalent statement if not q then not p, which can sometimes be an easier statement to prove. Let's see how this works. Suppose we're trying to prove the conditional statement if p then q. If we were using a direct proof, we would make the assumption that the antecedent p is true, and then we would be required to demonstrate that the consequent q is true. However, if we look at this statement in its contrapositive form, if not q, then not p, we get a different method of proof. Applying the principle of conditional proof to this, we see that if we make the assumption not q and then demonstrate not p, then the principle of conditional proof allows us to conclude, therefore, if not q, then not p, which of course is equivalent to the statement if p, then q. This gives us a proof method that we call proof by contraposition. To prove a statement if p then q, we make the assumption that the consequent is false. In other words, we assume not q. From there, we demonstrate that the antecedent is false. In other words, we demonstrate not p. And this is an alternate way of proving the statement if p then q. Let's look at an example. Here we're going to prove the statement for all x and y in the real numbers. If the product x, y is less than or equal to zero, then at least one of the two terms, x or y, must be less than or equal to zero as well. Writing the conditional statement in its contrapositive form, we have the statement, if x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero, then the product xy must be greater than zero. And this is a much easier statement to prove. Starting the proof, we notice that, again, this is a general statement about all values of x, y in the real numbers. And so we begin our proof by introducing arbitrary constants, x and y, in the real numbers. Next, we need to demonstrate the conditional statement, if x, y is less than or equal to zero, then x is less than or equal to zero, or y is less than or equal to zero. And since we're going to prove this using contraposition, we start with the assumption that the consequent is false. In other words, we assume both x and y are greater than zero. From here, we're required to demonstrate that the antecedent is false. In other words, we need to demonstrate that x, y is greater than zero. If we're able to do this, then the principle of conditional proof will allow us to conclude if x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero, then x, y is greater than zero, which is equivalent to its contrapositive form. If x, y is less than or equal to zero, then either x is less than or equal to zero or y is less than or equal to zero. If we can do this for the arbitrary constants x and y, then of course the principle of universal generalization will allow us to conclude that this is true for all values of the real numbers x and y. This forms the general structure of our proof, and so all we need to do is work out a demonstration. Let's turn to a scrap piece of paper. Our assumption is that x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero, which means we can use these two inequalities in our proof. We would like to draw a conclusion about the product xy, and so it makes sense that we would either start with the first equation, x is greater than zero, and multiply both sides by y to introduce the product xy, or we could start with the inequality y is greater than zero, and multiply both sides by x. Either way will work. Starting with x is greater than zero, if we multiply both sides by y, we can note that since y is greater than zero, multiplication by y will preserve the inequality. This is because of axiom 04. This gives us, on the left-hand side, 0 times y, and on the right-hand side, x times y. Of course, proposition 1 tells us that 0 times y is 0, and so we very quickly get the conclusion that we're looking for, 0 is less than xy. Let's return to the proof. Here we already have our assumption that 0 is less than x, and 0 is less than y. Applying axiom 04, we multiply both sides of the 0 is less than x inequality by y, this gives us 0 times y is less than x times y. Then applying proposition 1, we reduce the 0 times y expression to just 0, and we get our result. From here, the principle of conditional proof allows us to make the conclusion if 0 is less than x and 0 is less than y, then 0 is less than xy.
Expressing this statement in its contrapositive form gives us if x, y is less than or equal to zero, then either x is less than or equal to zero or y is less than or equal to zero, which is what we're trying to prove. All that remains is to say since x and y were arbitrary real numbers, the conclusion holds for all values of x and y in the real numbers. And this completes the proof. Let's look at another example. Suppose we wanted to prove the same statement, but using the number one instead of the number zero. In other words, we're trying to prove for all values of x and y in the real numbers, if the product x, y is less than or equal to one, then either x is less than or equal to one or y is less than or equal to one. If we were to attempt this using a direct proof, our assumption would be that x, y is less than or equal to one, and we would somehow need to break that multiplication apart to draw conclusions about x and y individually. This is much more difficult to do than to start with an assumption about x and y individually and combine them by multiplication to get a conclusion about x, y. For this reason, it makes sense that it would be easier to prove this statement in its contrapositive form. To begin the proof, noticing that it's a general statement about all real numbers x and y, we as always introduce arbitrary constants x and y into our proof. Then turning our attention to the conditional statement, having decided that we're going to prove this in its contrapositive form, we make an assumption that the consequent of the conditional statement is false. In other words, we assume that one is less than x and one is less than y. Following the proof by contraposition method, our job is now to prove that the antecedent is false. In other words, we need to demonstrate that one is less than x, y. If we're able to do this, then again, the principle of conditional proof will allow us to conclude if one is less than x and one is less than y, then one is less than x, y. Writing this conclusion in its contrapositive form gives us the statement we're looking for. If x, y is less than or equal to one, then either x is less than or equal to one or y is less than or equal to one. And finally, since x and y are arbitrary, the principle of universal generalization should allow us to conclude that for all values of x and y in the real numbers, this conditional statement is true. All that remains is to provide our demonstration. Let's again turn to a scrap piece of paper. The assumption that we're starting with is that one is less than x and one is less than y. And we need to somehow combine these inequalities to get an inequality that says one is less than x, y. Now it makes sense that we should take our inequalities and multiply on both sides by something. So for example, if we're starting with the inequality one is less than x, we should multiply on both sides by y. Or if we're starting with the inequality one is less than y, we could multiply on both sides by x. Either of these methods will introduce the product x, y into our inequality. Now we know from axiom 04 that we can multiply on either side of an inequality by a positive number and the inequality will be preserved. We can also argue that x and y are positive because since they're greater than one and one is greater than zero, x and y should also be greater than zero. This is using the transitivity axiom, O2. This means we can multiply our inequalities by either x or y and the inequalities will be preserved. Now if we multiply, for example, the inequality one is less than x on both sides by y, what we get is the inequality y is less than x, y. This is not quite what we're looking for we want an inequality that says one is less than x, y. But notice we also have the inequality that says one is less than y. And so with the inequality one is less than y and the inequality y is less than x, y, we can again appeal to the transitivity axiom, axiom O2, to conclude that one is less than x, y. And this is the inequality we're looking for. With this demonstration, let's return to our proof. Here we've already made our assumption that one is less than x and one is less than y. We'd like to multiply the one is less than x inequality by y, but before we can do that, we need to justify that multiplying by y will not change the direction of the inequality. To do this, we have to argue that y is greater than zero. We can make this argument by saying since zero is less than one and one is less than y, by transitivity, zero is less than y. Now that we know y is positive, we can multiply both sides of our inequality by y using axiom 04. We've now produced the inequality y is less than x, y, which if we combine that with the inequality one is less than y, we get one is less than x, y by transitivity. This completes our demonstration that one is less than x, y, which allows us to conclude using the principle of conditional proof that if one is less than x and one is less than y, then one is less than x, y. Writing this conclusion in its contrapositive form, we have if x, y is less than or equal to one, then either x is less than or equal to one 
or y is less than or equal to 1, which is what we were trying to prove. All that remains is to apply the principle of universal generalization to conclude that this statement holds for all values of x and y in the real numbers.